Hey everybody, welcome to video number two on how to animate your interior. Today we're going to be covering dials. If you missed the first video, go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. We did a switch in the first video. This one's going to be on dials and all the necessary steps and including the def information that you needed to input into the animations.sui so that you can apply this knowledge to modding your own truck. Let's get started. Now on to our dial. We're gonna use the air pressure one in this case. We're gonna select the center of the dial which is this point here. We're gonna move our cursor there. We're gonna duplicate a bone. And move it to that location. Now again, you'll notice that I'm trying to adjust the position of this to be where that blue line is on a flat plane where the needle will rotate on. The closer you get to being a flat plane is going to allow you to easily rotate the needle without making minor adjustments along the way. In this case, I'm gonna bring up wireframe to try to match it to something that's facing in that direction. In the end, it's a little too confusing with all the other uh, vertices and lines in this area from the wireframes. So I'm going to start removing models from the area. That way I can more easily line this up with the gauge itself. This is something that's going to work for you most of the time because all of the gauges are usually going to be on the same plane with maybe a few being off to the side on an angled panel. So doing this is going to help you take care of at least in this case, you can see about six other or five other gauges in this case. So that'll make it easier for those other ones. You won't have to do any more adjusting after you get the first bone correct. Again, this is mostly eyeballing because we're not measuring anything specific, but that is pretty close if you check it. Now let's get to animating. We've got the bone in position. We've selected our air brake pressure bone in this case. We're gonna verify that the vertex group that's assigned is going to be correct. So air underscore BRK underscore press. That's going to make these vertices that I'm selecting now and assigning to that vertex group. So when we go back in to select the bone in pose mode, it should be able to be rotated. Again, adding another animation by pressing the plus and then adding air brake press, adding an action as air brake press, and then selecting it in the active animation settings. I've selected two positions, but I'm probably going to need more as the game doesn't recognize animation selections over 45 degrees. Now I need to move this piece again into the animation and then assign it 
by parenting it to the armature with armature deform. There we go. Now you can see the little vertex group section. So now if we select the bone in question and go to pose mode, So the animation is a little bit off because it's going underneath the gauge as we rotate. Okay, so it looks like we've got it now. All right, there's position one. We're gonna apply our location. Now you'll notice what happens when I do this. It just goes back and forth between those two positions, which is exactly what the game would do. So we need to create another location so it it doesn't have to, um, it has to follow the path, which would mean it's going to go, be going directly north from that to location instead of directly to the 150 on the other side. So we're gonna pick selection two, and then we're gonna go about halfway, so almost to 90, 80 in this case. And then again, we're gonna select three, rotate it again to the 150, where we're going to press I again. And now we have all three positions. That way the game understands that we're going in a full rotation of the gauge and not directly from point A to point B. So if we play it now, it goes 10, 80, 150 instead of 10 to 150. Now that we've got those animations done, we can go to the root node, in, in this case called animation, and verify I have animated model selected in the root object. Create a default variant and a look if you desire, otherwise it will create them automatically and press the export button in the SCS export panel. After we export, you'll notice here air brake PR. As well as blink stick. That's the middle format. In this case will be a PIA for the animation. Then once you convert it, you'll see the PMA for when it's ready for in-game. So blinkstick.pma and airbreak PR PMA. So this is what your folder should look like. You'll have the pit, piss, pim. I know, piss, funny. This is the skeleton information. This gets written into the PMD PMG but it is separated out as that's the information in the armature about what the bones and how they move and where they all are. And that gets written directly into here. So you don't have to 
worry yourself about how there's only 23 items here and 24 there. That's a normal thing. So those are the two that we did in the video here, blink stick and air brake pressure. You may notice in our animations.sui file that we looked at at the previous video. Now during the dial, you'll see an additional value here below. There's a minimum and a maximum of the air pressure units. These are measured in bar. Bar is a pressure measurement. Mostly in the United States, we use PSI. These are easily convertible numbers. As you know from the dial, it went from 10 to 150 PSI. So in this case, I'm finding the maximum, which is 10.3 bar, which is exactly 150 PSI. So this will give an accurate reading on the dial of what the actual pressure is at that moment. That's how you input that information. You'll notice some of the other things like the tachometer have a minimum of zero and then the maximum of 3,500 RPM and the speedometer maximum 137 kilometers per hour, which equals 85 miles per hour, minimum zero. So these are all informational items that are on the wiki as well that you can go look at. I will leave a link in the description below. If you've made it this far, then hopefully animations is something that you're going to try soon. This is a rarely covered topic in how to mod SCS games. So I hope these specific instructions for both switches and dials will be able to help you animate the interior of your truck. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.